Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. It's your friendly, neighborhood famous critic back again, and boy oh boy do we have a juicy, royal story to sink our teeth into today. Grab your tiaras and your teacups, because we're about to dive headfirst into some serious crown jewel drama. So the world is still mourning the loss of the iconic Queen Elizabeth II, God rest her soul, when suddenly, bam, we're hit with news that's sparking more drama than a season finale of your favorite soap opera. We're talking about the Queen's jaw-dropping jewelry collection. And let me tell you, this ain't your grandma's costume jewelry we're dealing with here. But before we delve into the tumultuous waters of this revelation, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss the explosive content we have in store. So now before we get into the nitty gritty, let's take a moment to appreciate the absolute treasure trove we're talking about. The Queen's jewelry box wasn't just a box, it was probably a whole vault filled with sparkly bits and bobs that would even make Elton John's eyewear collection look tame in comparison. We're talking tiaras that could probably pay off a small country's national debt. Necklaces that would make Mr. T go, I pity the fool who was to carry that around all day. And enough diamonds to make a rapper's grill look like a kid's craft project. But the piece de resistance, the crown jewel of the crown jewels if you will, is this absolutely stunning Japanese pearl and diamond necklace. Now I don't know about you, but when I think of wedding gifts, I usually think of toasters or maybe a nice set of towels if you're feeling fancy. But apparently when you're the queen, you get gifted necklaces that are worth more than people's entire life savings. Talk about wedding goals, am I right? This necklace, folks, isn't just any old piece of jewelry. Oh no, this bad boy has been a staple of the queen's wardrobe since 1947. That's older than most of our parents. It's seen more history than your high school textbook and probably has better stories to tell too. I mean, imagine the state dinners, the royal tours, the corgis it's had to fend off. This necklace has lived a life. Now here's where things get spicier than the queen's secret curry recipe. Word on the street, and by street, I mean every tabloid and gossip column from here to Timbuktu, is that this priceless piece is being passed down to none other than Catherine, Princess of Wales. That's right. Kate Middleton, the woman who went from commoner to future queen faster than you could say fairy tale, is about to add another crown jewel to her already impressive collection. But wait, there is more. Apparently this isn't just a case of, here's a nice necklace, enjoy. Oh no, this is a whole symbolic gesture, people. It's like the royal version of passing the torch, except instead of a torch, it's a necklace worth more than the GDP of some small nations. It's the Queen's way of saying, Kate, my dear, you're the real deal. Here's a little something to remember me by. Oh, and good luck with the whole future of the monarchy thing. Now I can just picture Kate trying this necklace on for the first time. She is probably standing in front of a mirror the size of a small country, with about a dozen ladies in waiting hovering around her, all of them trying not to hyperventilate at the sight of this historic moment. And there's Kate, cool as a cucumber, probably thinking, all right, how am I gonna match my fascinators with this? But here's where the plot thickens, my friends. While Kate's over there channeling her inner queen with this new bling, guess who's reportedly been left empty-handed? That's right, none other than Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, former actress and current thorn in the royal family's side, if you believe the tabloids, that is. Now, I'm not one to stir the pot. Who am I kidding? Of course I am, but that's literally my job. This doesn't scream royal snub to you. I mean, can you just imagine the scene in the Sussex household right now? Harry's probably pacing around, wondering if his grandma forgot about them in her will, while Meghan's furiously googling how to start your own royal jewelry collection. But let's be real for a second, is anyone really surprised by this turn of events? I mean, Meghan and Harry did kinda drop the mic and moonwalk out of the royal life faster than you could say Meg's it. They traded the palace for palm trees, swapped royal duties for Netflix deals. Did they really expect to get a piece of the royal pie, or in this case, the royal pearls? Now, I'm not saying it's fair, I'm just saying it's about as surprising as finding out the queen liked her tea with milk. It's like when you quit your job in a blaze of glory, telling your boss where they can stick their TPS reports, and then act shocked when you don't get invited to the company Christmas party. Come on, Megan, read the room. But let's take a step back from the drama for a second and appreciate the sheer magnificence of this necklace. We're talking about a piece of jewelry that's probably seen more history than a high school textbook. This necklace, 
has been to more countries than most people's passports, has graced more state dinners than you've had hot dinners, and has probably been within spitting distance of every major world leader since the 1940s. Just imagine the stories this necklace could tell if it could talk. It probably has seen more royal secrets than a palace butler, more scandals than a tabloid editor, and more corgis than you could shake a stick at. This necklace isn't just a piece of jewelry, it's a walking, or rather hanging, piece of history. And now, all that history, all those stories are being passed down to Kate. It's like she's inheriting not just the necklace, but a piece of the queen herself. Every time she wears it, she'll be carrying a little bit of Elizabeth with her. It's enough to make even the most hardened Republican feel a twinge of monarchist sentiment. But here's the thing that's really got my cogs turning. What does this mean for the future of the monarchy? I mean, we all knew Kate was being groomed for queendom, but this? This is like the royal equivalent of being handed the keys to the kingdom. It's like the queen basically saying, you're the one, Kate, you're my chosen successor. Now go forth and slay, queen. And let's be honest, Kate's been absolutely crushing the royal game recently. She's got the wave down, she can rock a fascinator like nobody's business, and she manages to look elegant even when she's chasing after three kids who are probably hopped up on royal jelly or whatever it is they feed those little munchkins. Giving her this necklace is like the final piece of the puzzle, the cherry on top of the royal sundae. But what about Meghan, I hear you cry? Well, let's not shed too many tears for the Duchess of Sussex just yet. Sure, she might not be getting her hands on any royal jewels anytime soon, but let's remember, this is a woman who managed to snag a literal prince, scored a multi-million dollar Netflix deal, and now lives in a mansion in California. I think she'll survive without a pearl necklace, no matter how historic it might be. Plus, let's be real, can you imagine Meghan trying to rock that necklace while doing a juice cleanse in Montecito? It just doesn't fit the vibe, you know? Megan's more of a yoga and avocado toast, while this necklace is more tea and crumpets with the Prime Minister. But jokes aside, this whole jewelry drama is really just a microorganism of a bigger change happening in the royal family. It's like we're watching a changing of the guard in real time, except instead of guards, it's royals, and instead of changing, they're... Well, okay, the metaphor kind of falls apart there, but you get what I'm saying. We're seeing a shift in power, a change of the old order, at with the old guard, sorry Harry and Meghan, and in with the new. Take a bow, Kate and William. It's like a royal game of musical chairs, except the music stopped, and Kate's the one left sitting pretty, with a multi-million dollar necklace to boot. And let's not forget the absolute PR genius of this move, I mean, think about it. What better way to cement Kate's position in the future as the queen than by literally draping her in the queen's own jewels? It's like they're saying, look people, this is the real deal. This is the future of the monarchy right here. It's enough to make even the most ardent Republican pause and go, huh, maybe there's something to this whole royal thing after all. But here's the multi-million dollar question, or should I say the $122 million question, which is apparently what this necklace is worth? What is Kate going to do with this necklace? I mean, it's not exactly the kind of thing you can wear to pick up the kids from school or pop to waitress in. Is she going to save it for a special occasion? Will we see it make an appearance at the next state dinner? Or will it be locked away in a vault somewhere, only to be brought out when the next generation of royals needs a reminder of their heritage? Personally, I'm hoping Kate decides to really shake things up. Imagine her rocking up to the next royal garden party with this necklace paired with jeans and a t-shirt. Or better, let's see her loan it to William for his next public appearance. Now that would be a statement. But in all seriousness, this necklace represents so much more than just a piece of jewelry. It's a symbol of continuity, of the enduring nature of the monarchy. It's a physical link between the past and the future, a tangible reminder of the weight of history that rests on the shoulders of the royal family. And let's not forget, it's also a reminder of the human side of royalty. This wasn't just a queen passing down a valuable asset. This was a grandmother leaving a cherished possession to her granddaughter-in-law. It's a touching gesture that reminds us that beneath all the pomp and circumstance, the royal family is just that, a family. So what is the takeaway from all this royal jewelry drama? Well, for one, it's a stark reminder that in the Game of Thrones, you win or you don't really get expensive necklaces. It's a lesson in the power of symbolism, the importance of tradition, and the undeniable fact that some people just have way, way more expensive accessories than the rest of us. But more than that, it's a glimpse into the future of the monarchy. It's a sign that despite all the scandals, all the drama, all the Netflix documentaries, the institution of the royal family is still going strong. It's adapting, evolving, but at its core it remains the same. As for Meghan, well I'm sure she'll be just fine. After all, who needs priceless royal jewels when you've got Hollywood connections and a podcast deal, right? And hey, 
There's always the chance that Harry has a secret stash of royal cufflinks he's been hiding away. Never say never in the world of royal drama. So there you have it folks, the latest, greatest, pearl clutchingest news from the world of royal jewelry. Will this necklace be the key to Kate's future success as a queen? Will Meghan start her own jewelry line in retaliation? Will Prince William ever get his hands on some royal bling of his own? Only time will tell, my friends. Only time will tell. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.